If you're looking for a hay bale to feed your cattle, this is not the bale you want. This one is spoiled and full of mold. But researchers at Penn State University working with New Holland did this intentionally to measure how bale density affects hay spoilage and the loss of feed value. We've done study after study after study in field tests that's showing that density does extend the life, storage life of all the crops that you bale. But what we're not is we're not nutritionists. We don't get into the nutritional side of things. So we partnered with Penn State to take a much closer look at the nutritional side of things. We want to take a peek at that and see how density affects that. So essentially, the denser the bale we found has that longer bunk life. So the longer we have to feed out that bale, um, and the lower end on the density ratings that we did, um, we found that um, those bales would spoil anywhere between 60 and 65 hours. But on the more dense bales, we actually saw an increase of 20 to 24 hours of bunk life. There's definitely a relationship between the density of the bale uh, and the temperature that it gets to and the temperature affects how much protein is available, the availability of nutrients in that bale. As temperature goes up to a certain point, up to about 120 degrees Fahrenheit in that ballpark, we start to see the availability of some of those nutrients start to drop off. So in a, uh, you, you get a hot bale, run an analysis on it, and the crude protein comes back at 20%, there may be only 15% of that crude protein is really available because it's been bound up and not available to the animal. So, Another thing to think about is you're running analysis, quality analysis on these samples. Be sure to ask for a available crude protein measurement too, not just the crude protein, because that's sort of a, a number that doesn't really tell you much when it finally comes to how the animal's going to perform on it. To conduct the study, the Penn State team used round balers from a variety of manufacturers. They cut and baled hay at various speeds and set bale density at different pressures to see how feed value and storage life were affected. New Holland's Kurt Hoffman walked us through some of the differences in the resulting bales. So today we're going to take a look at some baleage bales. It's kind of like judging cattle at the local fair. You know, you got some good ones, you got some mediocre ones, and then you got some really good ones. So on this end, we got some of those lower end cattle that just aren't going to quite make the cut today. A little weak here, a little weak there, but as we go down the line, you're going to see that the quality of bale gets a lot better as the density goes up in the bale to give you a better quality silage bale. So one of the things we did is we took a look at bales and bale shape based on the density that the baler was set at. So bale 1 is made at 1,000 psi, bale 2, 1,200, 3, 1,400, so on and so forth. But what I want people to take a look at here is, is generally, this bale's not a bad looking bale. It's a little barrel shaped in the top, but what I want people to take a look at is, is look at these voids. We see a lot of voids. If I put my finger on that plastic, that plastic is soft right in there. So I know that when I cut the plastic off and I open it up, you're gonna find a little bit of mold in this area because we have a pocket of air um, that happened here. So that's 1,000 PSI. As we move up to 1,200, still see some pockets a little bit, but the bales will smooth out gradually as we keep moving up. So here we go to 1400, 1600. So if you look at this bale, especially you see a little bit here, a little here, a little here, a little bit of divoting back there. But now you start to see this bale starting to really get smooth, starting to see a nicer edge. That's really what I'm shooting for as a goal as a silage producer. If I want to pay particular attention to my bales and I'm with the best quality bales, we're starting to get there. Now we move to 1800 PSI, <clears throat> and this was a nice particular sweet spot, 1800 to 2000. But the divots are a lot smaller, my bales are a lot flatter. Notice this bale sits flat, and the ground is basically the same slope here. That bale's starting to get soft on me. That bale's a little soft and, and uh, not level also. And then if we move up to 2000 PSI, I just want everybody to take a look at how smooth the edges are nice and flat across the top. It's a nice bale. You, you pound on it with your fist, it's good and firm. I would expect that when I take the plastic off of this bale and feed this bale, I'm not gonna find hardly any mold or very, very little if I'm gonna see it. So just to give you a visual impact of the goal of what you wanna see, this is a good marshmallow, if you will, for a baleage bale. 
Of course, the main reason for making hay is to deliver the very best feed value to the animals consuming it. Since that's the purpose, the Penn State researchers say it pays to pay attention to bale density. The denser the bale, the better, whether you're making um, you know, wet hay or dry hay. And all of those has to do with um, hay storage. Um, but it also has to do with some of the nutritional and quality aspects of the forage as well. Uh, bale density is really important because uh, not only getting more in a bale, so you have to make less bales, but it re really affects if you're going to make silage, how well that silage ferments. Oxygen in the bale uh, slows down the fermentation process, extends it, makes the bale, lets the bale get hotter. The tighter you can make that bale and the tighter you can wrap that bale, squeezes more air out of it so that it'll go anaerobic quicker and start fermenting faster so the temperature doesn't rise. And 120 degrees, 125 is a point when the, the protein and carbon start to fuse together in the hay and makes the protein unavailable to the animals. So our crude protein level could stay the same in those bales, but the animals, it just blows through the animals. It's not utilizable at all by the animals. So the real available crude protein drops as the temperature goes up like that. Beyond the value of the nutrition for the animals, increased bale density or more crop in each bale also offers significant cost savings for the hay producer. So does making a dense bale uh, equal money in my back pocket? You bet, in a lot of different ways. You know, like we've talked, it cuts down on storage losses. That's the big one. But it also increases the quality of feed that you're feeding. So there's less mycotoxins, less molds in that feed if we get proper fermentation. Yeah, it means big money at the end of the year. Um, at the end of five years, like we were talking about earlier, you can pay for a four by five round baler with the savings in just net wrap and film wrap, let alone the other things, the time and the fuel. We didn't even give any consideration to that kind of stuff. When we know from the Penn State bale density study that our sweet spot is that eight to nine mile an hour, that's where we make the densest bale. Um, over the competition. So bottom line, run your baler at wherever it will perform the best to make the densest bale. And then the excellent, or the other thing that you can do that helps is turn the density up. You want your density always set to max if you're doing dry crops, if you're doing silage crops. My advice to cattle producers is just to make as dense a bale as possible and also to know your baler. In the past, we have thought that possibly the slower you go, the more dense the bale you make. But some of our research has shown that that, in fact, may not be the case. So it's important to know the type of baler that you have and to know what that sweet spot is to make the most dense bale. Because that is the bottom line, is make as dense a bale as possible. That way you have that increased or prolonged bunk life in order to feed your cattle um, you know, that optimum quality forage. Additional research results and recommendations from the Penn State work will be shared with producers across the country in the months ahead. At Penn State, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen.